Alrighty, 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 alrighty. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel for another market update. Today is fascinating, guys. All right, we got some exciting stuff going on. Uh, to, for me, all right, this is a uh, kind of a confirmation kind of day. We're gonna have to see what comes on Monday. Um, but hey, guys, FOMC is looking like it's going to be bearish. I told you guys in yesterday's video. Uh, guys, if we rise going into FOMC, you are going to fall. All right. And if you don't fall, just realize any rally is going to be very short lived and you eventually are going to uh, completely rug pull. All right. That is likely going to be the case. Uh, we had GDP data that came out hot. We had inflation data that came out today that wasn't hot. All right. It was uh, down by 0.1 percent. Uh, that was the PCE data today. Um so yeah, guys. All right. So we got FOMC on November 2nd. I have that marked here on the chart. And just to look at where things are, guys, we literally have set up a gorgeous bearish divergence here on uh, Spy's daily time frame. Come over to QQQ. It is setting up for the same exact thing. We're going to have to see what happens going into Monday. Uh, but we are going to go over the setup that we're currently rocking with. And uh, we're going to come up with a likely scenario going into Monday. All right. At the same time, we're also going to have a likely scenario going into FOMC and coming out of FOMC. All right, so, hang on. All right, sorry about that. I am back. All right, guys, so we got QQQ with a uh, bullish uh, candlestick, bullish engulfing candlestick right here, engulfing yesterday's price action. We have the same exact thing on SPY, except, holy crap, the candle is twice the size. All right, well, actually, no, it's not twice the size. It is just breaking highs, so it's making it look a lot bigger than it actually is. Uh, but yeah, clear as day, you have this bearish divergence forming right here. It doesn't look like it has finished forming. We're going to have to see that thing turn down before I can really say, hey, there's a bearish divergence there on the daily time frame. But I just want to remind you guys, what called the bottom here? What called the fact that we are going to be bouncing here when uh, all, fundamental, uh, all fundamental factors suggested otherwise? The daily divergence, all right? We're getting a daily divergence here and is to the downside, all right? So, uh um, yeah, but I also want you guys to keep this in mind. Okay, the divergences, they have not done us dirty. They really have not. All of these uh daily, we had a daily bullish diversion that uh, finished carving out right here, and look what happened. You ended up rallying for another, yeah, you fell the next day, but you rallied uh, another $13 off of that on Mr. Spy. All right, now keep in mind the daily time frame has been quite uh it has been quite bipolar okay so i want you guys to keep this in mind when we're going over a daily analysis divergences they really haven't done us wrong no, no divergences do me wrong all right uh but candlesticks yeah they have been screwing with us they have been trolling the crap out of us you have a bearish engulfing candlestick now understand you needed to confirm this candlestick that's what i told you guys yesterday that i was looking for uh and if we did confirm that we also would be confirming a uh what do we have i swear we had a bearish harami candlestick pattern oh this okay so if we confirm the bearish engulfing candlestick here we would have also confirmed this uh well likely if we closed underneath 378.67 or 378.79 uh we would have needed to do that to confirm a uh bearish harami candlestick pattern well i'm going to tell you guys right now both of these if we close above both of these right here uh, this high right here at 385.08, well, that's actually not the high. The high is, uh, or the close is 384.92, and then also this bearish and gold candle. Yeah, I mean, it looks it looks very, very much so like that is going to be nullified. Um, so again, I mean, take this bullish and gold candlestick with a grain of salt, but I'm going to explain my, uh, my case here for why we most likely will be rallying going into FOMC. Uh, considering where we are at the current point in time, we are so high up here, guys um i'm just saying guys before a very big catalyst and we have hot gdp numbers okay guys i'm just saying it would make a lot of sense to either come in with that 75 or 100 bp hike i think a 50 basis point hike is 100 percent off the table um me kevin made a video about what he thinks is going to be happening uh regarding the next two fomc meetings and yeah i mean i'm just saying this is what i've been saying for weeks now all right i have been saying the fundamentals guys are dog crap all right straight up we should not have stopped here we should not have started rallying but at the same time the market could do whatever it wants and the market can stay rational longer uh longer than you can stay solvent all right luckily that's where trade management comes in and that's where uh guys don't don't call all in on something okay something like this can literally wipe someone out uh it was dangerous all right i wiped out one third of my port 
dangerous all right dangerous i thought i was going to be rich very quick dangerous all right we, we go for the base hits but by, by base hits i mean 50 to 100 percent gains that's really all i'm after here trade after trade after trade all right uh unfortunately yeah uh i did not uh i did not listen to the bullish setup we had rocking with uh i clearly outlined the bullish setup each and every day for like so long when we were down here um by that i just mean these two days right here um but yeah i mean it was undeniably bullish but hey look what happened guys technicals prevailed uh prevailed over fundamentals so just saying guys all right fundamentals are dog crap and now technicals are suggesting that you have some room to the downside to go but uh heading into fomc why are they going to start sending you down unless they want to bring these oscillators down into this middle area right here uh where then hey you guys can pretty much go wherever you want it could be setting up for either scenario all right uh but yeah let's go over the rest of the charts here all right um, but yeah, just a little FOMC talk because that is what we got right around the corner. And I am personally going to be playing that with a strangle. Yes, guys, we're giving the strangle another shot. I will not stand down. Okay, straight up, guys. We're in this game to win this game. And yeah, you don't get that by uh, being a loser and then walking away. Okay, no, you could be a loser and you take it as a lesson and you get back up the next time until you get it right. Okay, and then once you get that right, you will get it right every other time because now you know what not to do and what exactly to do. And there you go. You have a money printer for the rest of your life. That is what I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to establish that with the strangle. And honestly, guys, uh, I think it's very easy. I just really need to not let my emotions get the best of me straight up. That's so like when I buy the strangle, guys, one side is going to zero. Okay, straight up. One side is going to zero. I don't care. I am going to just play it as a strangle. All right, I'm going to be buying two weeks on these options. Because, uh, I mean, we're going to see the setup going into FOMC, but I am going to be taking these uh, positions right before FOMC. We all saw what happened on the last one where you just, I think it was over here. Uh, it was one of these big days uh, somewhere over here. But, I mean, of course, we had the CPI data uh, right here. So, I mean, anything can happen, guys. But knee-jerks reactions uh, around events, they're typically always going to be on the table. All right. So, even if you don't want to let one side go to zero... You could easily just like like the CPI down here, okay? CPI strangle. I completely like cut the call side going into close over here, and then boom! All right, the call side would have been what would have made up for the put side, and that's why I say I am not going to try and trade this thing. I am literally going to buy the strangle and I'm going to hold the strangle. I have dated puts, all right? Luckily, guys, and this is why I said what I said yesterday, guys, I guaranteed we'll be starting to take profits if you have your four-hour oscillators going from here to here. Luckily, I cut 50% yesterday. Which, that's, that's perfect, guys, okay? That's perfect. You guys saw what happened today. I told you guys that this was on the table. This was a possibility just because our four-hour oscillators have already gotten all the way back down here on QQQ and Apple and Amazon, Okay. Um, now look what's going on here with Apple and Amazon. Let's look at their charts. Okay. Uh, Amazon poor, poor baby over here. Just kind of, uh, you know, just never recovered. Um, it's trying, but yeah, look at Apple again with the bearish divergence on the daily time frame. Yes, you can keep going higher, but we are going to, uh, set that right there. What is the high of day over here? So we had high of day of 158.74. So 158.74. We're going to set that and we're going to leave it. Okay. And do we, what are, what are the odds that we end up, we'll deal with this when we come to it. Okay. If, if Apple breaks this resistance, obviously we will be putting this on the board. Um, but straight up guys, your daily uh, setup over here on Apple is also bearish. Now, Amazon, obviously, uh, uh, yeah, I, I got no words for that. Like straight up, you are trying to recover and you're just lagging so hard behind. Like, look what Apple is doing, guys. Look at that. But then look at Amazon. That's because Apple had mixed uh, guidance. I included that in the Weeble update. Apple had a, it was pretty much, it was a mediocre report. Okay. They pretty much beat on everything. Um, now here's the thing though. Um, their guidance, they didn't downgrade, they didn't upgrade. All right. It was kind of just it was mixed. They, they're like, that's what I'm saying. It was a... You know, it was it was a nothing report, okay? But Amazon, no, I told you guys that it was very logical for Amazon to downgrade their future guidance, okay? Like, it made perfect sense considering Jeff Bezos went to Twitter one to two weeks ago. I think it was literally a week ago. It was like October 19th or something. And he literally was warning about a 2023 global recession, okay? So what made anybody think that Amazon would not be downgrading their guidance? 
it's just it's not guaranteed to happen nothing is guaranteed to happen but like just i'm just saying guys all right uh but look at this you do have uh you are falling on inclining volume here but that also can uh equal a bottom i don't know okay but just look at this volume spike as you are rising okay so we're gonna take off you we're gonna take off you for now we could take off bitcoin bitcoin we're not even talking about that bad boy right now um, but yeah, coming over to the daily time frame, let's uh, quickly just go over everything right here. You have your stochastic crossing up. This is what I was saying, guys. It continues to be bipolar. Oh, look at that. Now your RSI is crossing over 50 again. All right. And your CCI is again crossed up from hinging straight down. Okay. You come over to SPY. Oh, look at that. You never went through the sell line because your daily technicals were again bipolar. You have the same exact thing going on over here with the uh, uh, stochastic over there. You have your RSI hinging up. With that bullish engulfed candle on QQ and SPY. All right. And again, like I said, you engulfed the bearish engulfing candle. So that is that is like just another reason we really should be discounting the daily candlesticks. They have been trolling the crap out of us. The daily candlesticks and the daily oscillators have been literally trolling us for like two weeks straight. I, I don't advise anybody listen to them. Okay. I listened to the four hour time frame yesterday. And yeah, it treated me well. Okay, straight up. I, I wish I got out of all of them, but at the same time, no, I want to exit. I want to enter in intervals. I want to exit in intervals. All right. That's what Sebastian brought me up on. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. I got my trade management from Sebastian. I'm bringing that back into my life. All right, guys. So let's go over everything right now. All right. So we got the, uh, actually, we didn't go over VIX. We didn't go over Mr. VIX. Uh, VIX, at the same time, you're forming those bearish divergences over here on SPY and QQ. You have a bullish divergence forming right here. I believe that's a bullish divergence. Yes, you do. You clear as they are downing uh, right there. But yeah, you nullified your bullish Harami candlestick pattern. Same time, you had the bearish uh, Harami candlestick pattern followed by the bearish engulfing candle over on SPY. Uh, and then again, yeah, you nullified the crap out of both of those. So who says we can trust these? I'm not going to say we can trust the daily technicals yet. I still believe like, hey, uh, the bear market, people will be guided by technicals. But it, I'm just saying, guys, they are flawed clearly are flawed all right but you got your stochastic crossing down now but you are forming that diverge let's go over to the four hour time frame we have a and i told you guys in yesterday's videos that this cci looked like it was getting ready to take another dive and really form or carve out that divergence look what we got guys we did end up doing that and that is guys this is just like literally uh training your eye to look for certain things it may seem stupid call me a clown all you want i'm a fool okay but at the same time i'm a fool who plans I'm making money in the long term in the short term all right so i just want to win straight up that's it's that easy all right going over spy uh your oscillators are literally back up in this uh oversold or overbought territory and you come over here do we have our uh bearish diverge we're gonna have to see that start hinging all right but we're gonna go over like why this setup is just so unique all right like this really is a unique setup we're rocking with which leads me to believe um we are going to be continuing into monday we are going to continue this bullish price action holy crap up three percent guys wowza after amazon fell 20 percent, the market gods all right the sebastian calls it the market hand i've been referring it to months on this channel as the market gods all right when you see stuff that is just absolutely irrational is begin again there if you see stuff that is irrational price action that is irrational it normally comes in the form of these divergences on the higher time frames or off of all time frames all right um, and that's just because someone wants this to happen so they can release that pressure and then boom, you get rubbed from one side to the other. All right. And that's like, honestly, what looks like it's going to be the case, but it does look like you're going to continue higher. Let's see. You were at 159 over here. You had 177 over here and you had 189 over there. Guys, if you start hinging down in your stochastic here, you have a quin trip. Is that the word for it? Quin triple uh, bearish divergence going on. All right. Or we could just, you know, we'll just say quadruple. We'll say a triple or quadruple diverges going on here um, because you broke past there. But either way, I am looking for that to start hinging. As you see, your stochastic is hinging down. Your RSI is hinging down. Your CCI is not, though. So I am uh, not going. I'm not going to be entering puts, guys. I'm just letting you guys know. I am sitting on what I have right now. I got 50% on my November 18 puts left, and I have all my December 16 puts um and yeah guys i'm just saying i am uh i'm looking to offload those december 16s and completely like i don't want to be in those anymore i really don't i just rather trade what is in front of me and just start fresh but at the same time i do know we are 
very likely going to have a pullback at some point. And I do believe that is now going to be off of FOMC because we are rallying going into FOMC. It is exactly what I said yesterday. If you want to rally off of like out of FOMC, you need to drop into FOMC. If you want to uh if you want to drop out of fomc you need to rally into fomc that is exactly what's taking place we have two trading sessions before fomc day um and honestly guys yeah we are queuing up for just that going over spy it is the same exact situation as qqq you got your stochastic uh rolling over here your k going into the d did i say that right uh we got the yep k going into the d we got it right for the second day let's get it guys you have your rsi hinging again cci is not doing anything uh, but again, we just went over this. You do have your four-hour divergent. And honestly, guys, we can see this go lower. If if spy goes higher, you're gonna see that go lower. And guys, we continued our trend of falling in after hours, and then boom, Vix gets Mr. Vix gets another chance to get the crap beat out of him. He is missing so many of his teeth. I told you guys yesterday. He is just like down on the ground. He's getting curb stomped right now. But again, he is going to have this spike, and that spike is going to give him enough money to go buy some diamond encrusted teeth. All right, and it's going to be sexy. All right, I do believe it is coming. I think it's only a matter of time. All right, um, but keep in mind where we are on the weekly time frames here. We do have this. Uh, it's not a bearish divergence because he didn't make the higher high there. But either way, we are coming down from uh, overbought territory here on the weekly time frame on uh, VIX, whereas we are rising from the oversold territory down here on SPY and QQQ. All right, now going over the one hour time frame. So you guys know where the four hour time frame stands. And I do believe we are going to go back up and we're going to continue making these divergences. We're going to talk about the actual price action um, in a sec. All right, I just want to go over the hourly time frame right here. Oscillators, you're curving down. Okay, you're curving down. You have a slight bearish divergence form. It is a half ass there. You want to see another point of divergence. You have your spy doing the same exact thing. But again, these guys can, they can go for a while. All right, we can easily see it drop a little bit. And then we could see it rally back up. And honestly, that would be the same exact thing on the four hour time frame. All right. Now, going over the price action, this is why I say this is so unique. And it really does lead me to believe we are going to be rallying uh, going into FOMC. All right. Because again, we only have two trading sessions. Honestly, guys, this setup looks bullish. Now, the only thing wrong is, uh, yeah, you got your oscillators on all time frames, just like besides the weekly and monthly, obviously. Um, you got your oscillators on all time frames beside the weekly and monthly, just way up here. I'm just saying, guys, any rally is likely to fail. All right. Like, I don't care what they say in FOMC. Like, even if you rally off of FOMC, which there is the possibility, which is why I am introducing the strangle and we will go over numbers on, uh, Monday or not. We'll, we'll discuss this in the Sunday, uh, weekly update. But then again, I mean, I, I'm going to obviously take my positions based off of the price we are at right before FOMC. Uh, but we will go over dates in Sunday's weekly update. We will also be going over the weekly and monthly time frame over there as well. Um, but here's why you were just so bullish, guys. Look at So I trace this trend line on the four hour time frame, and then I trace Q's uh, trend line on the daily time frame. All right, we got rejected exactly at it, like th pretty much three days in a row here. Um, on QQQ, you come over to SPY. I know that looks a lot uh, like very off here, but let's go over to the four hour time frame there and look at what you got going on here. All right, so you literally got rejected by your, uh, like your decent, uh, like actually, guys, we will literally put a uh, target on the board here. Let's go over to here, let's go over to uh, uh, trend break down uh what is it down trend what would it be what would it be what would it be? Uh, uh, no 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 go back access out uh let's go over there let's go over there let's go up there chart patterns uh it's got to be one of these uh downtrend breaks or um what would it be under Trend lines. All right. I, I, I always get confused by that, but I'm on here so often because we have so many trend lines that gets broken. Um, measure rule. Okay. I just need to find our percentage. I, I feel like it is like 60 something percent. Um, oh, 56%. All right. So, uh, yeah, 56%. We have to multiply. What would be the bottom point? It would, no, it would be here. All right. So you want to take the farthest distance from there. So we have 44. Jesus Christmas, guys. Holy jeez. All right, so we come over to calculator. 44, we we'll round down because always being conservative here on the channel is the best way to go. $24. Jesus, guys. Jesus. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you have some room to run. Anything can happen with FOMC, which is why I will be guaranteed um, 
playing that strangle, okay? You have it right here. We're going to round uh, to the nearest whole number right there. We're going to round down to 409 because, again, why not be very conservative here? All right, we have a target of 409 on SPY, and now let's go over to QQQ. You broke your downtrend a while back. Um, but let's see what you would have been rocking with. I failed to put a target on the board here, by the way, and if you guys really do want to see it, we can easily... Go like that and you are um and that's why i'm not using it this just doesn't look sexy it doesn't look like price is respecting that trend line it's kind of just dancing around it unlike spy this is so beyond sexy you got the the reject you retrace and then boom you broke it okay that is your like pretty much hook and go right no this is the hook and go what you what you have going on on qqq and then this is why i'm saying i i'm keeping the daily uh trend line here Strictly because look at what you got, guys. It is respecting the crap out of this trend line. Boom. You reject, reject. What is this? One, two, three, four. Four rejects, and then you break it. You go up to your next heavy resistance. You come back down, and you... Guys, you tested your trend line. This looks so bullish to me, all right? Like, straight up, that's that's why I'm saying, like, hey, guys. And I actually, I was in calls yesterday. Um, I, I sold them, all right? I sold them uh going into uh like very shortly after i bought them because i realized how stupid i was being i was like wait a minute what are you what are you doing all right you have amazon earnings it's like almost guaranteed to tank that's almost guaranteed to tank down uh take down the queues uh but either way guys those would have went absolutely insane okay i had uh i think it was november uh whatever the first expiration after october 31st was i had the uh 278 calls and then I also had uh, today's expiration, which again, holy crap, if I held on to those, they would have went insane, okay? You guys saw what happened to those? All right, they went literally insane in the membrane today if you were in uh, zero uh, DTE uh, expiration calls today. They went insane, guys, insane. Um, but yeah, I didn't end up playing that because yeah, I knew Amazon was going to be bringing down the market or I had a very strong hunch there. Oh, look at that, SPX facing the 100 MA. 3,903, all right, guys, that is pretty sexy, okay? And we actually can come over to Weeble. I want to point something out here. Um, let's come over to Weeble. I hope you pop up. There we are. Let's go okay right there. We're going to come over to Spy, and we're on Weeble because I have my MAs here. Um, oh, it's not popping up. Why do I... Oh, screw this. All right, uh, I'm always on my phone. In my, I'm just saying, all right, I don't know what's wrong with this one, but I always have these exact MAs up right here. We got the 50. We got the 100. Um, and if you guys know how to fix Weeble from doing this, I actually, I haven't been on the desktop Weeble in quite some time. I just re-downloaded it. Um, so maybe that is why, um, uh, no, stop, stop. I don't want, stop, please. I don't want to stall, bro. Come on. Don't, don't freak it. Stop, bro. Stop. Oh, why would you do that? I, I really hope it didn't just stop recording. Screw Weeble, guys. Screw Weeble. That's what I'm saying. Screw Weeble. I don't know. I literally downloaded it the other day. Why is it making me update already? I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, guys, I just want to show you guys, we are literally fighting the 50 and 100 on, it's either Spy or QQ, I forgot what we had it on. Um, I think it's on Spy. You're fighting the 50 and the 100. You're just going up to the 100. Obviously, as you just see, you saw Sebastian tweet right there. Um, but yeah, you are at the 100 MA here, bouncing in between the 50 and 100 on Spy. And then you're also doing the same exact thing to the downside on the 50. At, I don't know why we didn't just actually do this. We could easily... Uh, pop this bad boy up. Uh, where's the moving average? Moving average. We will put two up right there. Um, crap. I really hope it did not stop recording. I don't have time to make another one, but I will because, you know, uh, do it for the YouTube. This is like my future. All right. Straight up, guys. I will do this for years and years to come. Okay. Uh, I can't promise what's going to come out of this YouTube channel. I just kind of want to make a name for myself. And that's that. Okay. Whether it's an institution, whether it's a, I don't, I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. All right. But I'm going to be here for years and years to come doing exactly this because, I mean, I'm going to be honest, dude. I know for a fact this is providing a crap ton of value. Uh, you actually did end up tanking right through it on VIX, all right? But on SPY, uh, crap, dude. I am, like, having a brain fart here. I swear it was a thing, guys. On Weeble, it's a thing. Oh, it's the 200 I got right here. Okay. Uh, force of habit. Um, come over here. Down the 100 MA. Oh, boom. All right. Thank Jesus. All right. I thought I was going insane there. Um, but yeah, uh, you clearly went right through it on VIX, Mr. VIX. But on SPY, you did not. And you are right up to it. I really hope this thing didn't stop recording. I'm going to be tight. I'm going to finish up this video because I got to check if this thing 
uh, ended up stopping recording because I got to quickly record a new one. Uh, but just saying, guys, all right, you are breaking out here. We're not going to put a price target here on Mr. Q. Actually, yeah, we will. Yeah, we will. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, we're going to do it just like that. All right, so we got 23 calculator. All right, 23 times 0.56. All right, $12. Uh, your breakout was right here. All right, I, you actually already hit it. All right, the target was literally here, guys. And that is the, guys, this is the point of using Bolkowski's TA. It is so spot on that, like, there's a reason the percentage meaning tar price target is there because, like, you can just take the actual price target and there's that, but you got to have the, you got to multiply it by the percentage meaning price target because that is, you know, av av over all of the averages that he has, like, it's the average of all the tests he ran and, like, you know, that's where price is likely to be headed because it's set average of thousands and thousands of back tests. And if you guys don't believe me, go read his book and he will, he will, I mean, it's not like he can't show you proof of that, but yeah, he has software that you can actually down here, download here on the computer. I think it's called candlesticks. Um, it's, uh, Thomas Bukowski's personal software and it literally identifies candlestick patterns and targets for you, but it is inaccurate. All right. So I recommend just going on his website and doing what we do here on the channel. Either way, guys, you have a break and retest here between major resistance and then your downtrend. This, like, really does look bullish, all right? Like, I can't deny. The only thing bad about this setup is look at where your oscillators are, all right? Straight up. You still have that bearish divergence. You know the market god is doing this, all right? You know for a fact the market god is doing this. But, and that's why, like, I, I, I don't know, all right, if we are going to end up reaching this price target in the near-term future, Either way, it is going to be there. We're going to keep it on the board here because we do have this price target here. Um, but either way, like if we do, guys, maybe we rally like $10 each day for the next two trading sessions. I don't know. Okay, but that would be a picture perfect short entry going into FOMC, guys. All right, and I am excited. All right, guys, with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.